good morning or it's already afternoon uh, i greet you friends from ukraine from uh, snowing ukraine i can we have snow from yesterday and i can show you how it's look like so everything is in snow and yesterday it was so many snow so who can tell about uh, global warming if we have snow till now it's okay and today is topic uh, about history about iron age and you can see that uh, climate it change all the time from the old time but due to we live just for short time at least till 100 years we don't know what happened 2000 3000 years ago about 3000 years ago the world was totally different <laughs> from uh, Mongolia, from uh, China till Hungary. Here was the big, the big grassland. Uh, it's called steppe. And all the time, different kind of people were moved around from one point to other. Uh, start from the 11th century. Uh, in Mongolia, <laughs> lived skidans, sidans, sidans. It was uh, nomad people. Uh, it was really gorgeous, um, gorgeous people. We can call them the Lord of the Steps. And I recommend you to read a book, uh, the book of the Barry, Barry Can, uh, uh He is archaeologist, professor from uh, England who uh, make details certain about ski dance. I gave you link to this book, really, really great person. And he can tell about uh, no simple things in very simple way. I watch his video, his videos great just, and his book, I think. So about uh, 11, 10th century BC, uh, the climate become change. If before uh, there were mostly pastors, uh, peaceful people who were wandering from one point to other, after 10th century the climate should be changed because before it was mostly like dry, <laughs> uh, dry climate and it was dry, especially in Mongolia, in the east, and it became much wetter and uh, much uh, better for people, for their enemy, uh, animals. <laughs> um, and ski dance, ski dance, ski dance. Uh, we think that uh, they were ancestor of um, Iranians who lived also in the territory of Ukraine in the Bronze Age. I told you about the Bronze Age, my previous video. As I told uh, these Iranian people, Aryans moved to India and probably these people came back to uh, here uh, and they called uh, Sidans. Uh, the first, uh, the big, big uh, burial mound uh, were fixed in Mongolia uh, about 11th century BC. Uh, burial mound because uh, they buried their king in the huge, huge burial mound, in the huge grave. They put their uh, bodies in special chamber. Uh, they put there are not only the body of the king but also his uh, wife his females his slaves his horses uh, in one of uh, such kind of the burial mound archaeologists found 150 horses and these horses were from different kind of um, region uh, so 
it looks like this king uh, possessed by the big area by many people came uh, and give uh, the last gift to him <laughs> uh, and difficult to understand the whole history it's difficult <laughs> i studied for five years history <laughs> but nevertheless i like it uh, and you can try just get up <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, thank you as well, Ari. Thank you for everybody and uh, Merry Christmas to everybody tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow we have uh, Catholic Christmas and on the 7th of uh, January Orthodox Christmas. So we have the whole big many days of the fast <laughs> right now. And about, uh, I think about 10th century, BC, uh, BC uh, these people moved to the west uh, and in that time in the Middle East uh, there was the big state called Assyria Assyria it's like Syria now and but in the old time it's called Assyria <laughs> it's occupied the big area of modern Iraq uh, Syria part of Turkey uh, also Jerusalem Israel, modern Israel, and uh, the ruler in this country was Semitha, like uh, the ancient Jewish people, Semitha, Sem Semitic people, Semitic. Um, and about Caucasian, Caucas, Caucas mountains, the, uh, there was another, not so big, but nevertheless important state called Urartu. Urartu, um, it's old uh, Armenian state. Armenians, uh, they admire, they proud of their uh, <laughs> professors. Um, Urartu was known with its craftsmen. They make very nice craft detail decorations. And when residents uh, reach uh, Kavkaz, uh, they uh, stay there, part of them at least stay there. They work with Urartu. And as residents uh, uh, were also warriors, uh, they work uh, for Urartu against um, uh, um, Assyria. <laughs> they fought against Assyria on the side the of Urartu. And uh, already in that time, Sidans were rich people and uh, they order to Urartu craftsmen different kind of decoration. Sidans uh, King, um, archaeologists found many rich burial mounds, burial, burial graves, and the king, uh, king clothes were, um, were decorated with many gold plaques, with many, many just gold plaques. Uh, on the, these plaques you can see different animals, uh, such kind of animals, a uh, griffin, this is fantastic burst. Probably this image of griffins they adopted from Syria because it's more, more like Persian uh, art. Traditionally, Sidans uh, depicted uh, um, horses, uh, deers uh, on the uh, craft, on the uh, things. Mm. And at least they reach Ukraine, reach Ukraine. In Ukraine, we have, um, especially in the um, south of Ukraine, we have the big, uh, the big many lands of the steppes land, and uh, it was perfect uh, places for Sidans. They move from one place to another. These people had like press stage, but this state had not. Um, town they didn't build town they didn't build the uh, cities uh, all the time they uh, wandered from one place to another they live in special carriage uh, with horses uh, uh, but nevertheless they have kings they have um, 
warriors, they have pastors, and also they had slaves from that time, and many, many gold decorations. Sidan's mm. warriors were ra la rather interesting. They tried to help each other, and when they go to the battle, they have um, all uh, each of them have a friend who hel help uh, him. They uh, fight uh, <laughs> together on the field, on the battle, and try to help each other. They call each uh, called uh, themselves themselves brothers, and they have special ritual how to be brother. The ritual of brotherhood. For this ritual, they cut a bit their fingers. They take blood from that. After they put uh, this blood in a special um, dish, it's called riton, and uh, mix it with wine. They drink this holy wine together. Uh, in such a way, they um, uh, tell uh, that uh, they're going to help each other for, for all of their life. One of the most attractive, one of the most beautiful items that we, which was found by archaeologists in the old time was gold pectoral. Gold necklace, it was found by Soviet archaeologists in 1917s in burial mound that's called Tovsta Mohila in the Dnipropetrovsk region in the south of Ukraine. Mm. It is like gold, gold decorations, more than 100 gram, and it had have has three level. Uh, the middle level there was a um, tree of life with flowers, and the bottom level level there are two men uh, who make shirt, who make dress for themselves, such kind of peaceful scene. So this decoration depicts uh, the outlook of Sidans, how they think. Uh, they think that from the death came new life through the tree of life. That is why they built this huge barrel mound for the king, because in such way they uh, think that life is eternal, that from the death should to come new life. After old king died, the new king come, but uh, for this they need to make this ritual. Uh, this burial mound to Stamohila was excavated by Soviet archaeologist Boris Modzolevsky in 1917s. Very interesting archaeologist, a very interesting person. He was also poet. He make many poet, uh, poems about Chukurvan, about Burial Mount, about Sea Dance, about history. He like much step region. Uh, and you can see his book as well, I think probably in Ukraine or internet. He found this decoration just uh, by accident. They uh, dark uh, chamber inside of the burial mound and there were nothing because uh, robber took everything from the burial mound many burial mounds were robbed <laughs> by bad people but once he clean uh, floors he was cleaning floors in the uh, side of the chamber and he open the land and he have seen uh, the light of the gold uh, so it was the gold pectoral and he was very proud of this he told that gold pectoral saved his life <laughs> communist um, regime communistic people didn't like him because he like be uh, to tell truth he was very free free man you know and after he found this gold pectoral, he became like 
the most famous uh, archaeologist, by the way, Chalau, he is the most uh, famous archaeologist in Ukraine. Uh, when he died, uh, uh, people put uh, bronze pectoral, or pectoral on his uh, grave as a symbol of his, his life. And this gold pectoral, from that time till now, is um, uh, in Museum of Historical Treasures of Ukraine. If you go to Ukraine, probably you know about Chalavra Monastery. This is the uh, big monastery in Kiev. And inside of this monastery, there are many museums. One of them is Museum of Historical Treasures. <laughs> I used to work there and I really like this museum. There are so many gold stuff. Three of uh, its room dedicate to Sidian's uh, culture. Mm. And in that time, people in that time people stay in the line for see the spectral. It was the big line of the people from the entrance to the monastery to the museum. I knew many patriotical people who work there from the first day till now. It's amazing how people can be patriots of their museum, how they uh, keep, how they love these items. And uh, I think this is a uh, museum of the <laughs> one of the first museum of Ukraine, one of the best, uh, and I recommend you to visit. This is history, the short, just a short introduction to Sidan's history. You can read a book of the professor from the England. You can see, you can look on the items, you can try to understand this history. My job is just introduction. So thank you for watching. Thank you, everybody. And uh, one more time again, I wish you have a good Christmas, who celebrate Catholic Christmas. Um, and uh, of course, Happy New Year as well. <laughs> so thank you for watching and see you soon.